Hi Floss Tube. Um, does anyone feel like you're never you never know what you're gonna get when you <laughs> watch my videos? I'm always in a different spot. Um, this is a good spot. I have all my stitching stuff behind me. Um, I've reorganized it a little bit since I took that video of how I organized my stuff. So this is my current setup and I like it. Um, thanks for being here. If you're a new viewer, I have um, glad you decided to tune in. If you're returning, I'm so glad you're back. There's so many floss tubers out there. Um, I only, there's probably 10 or 15 that are kind of my go-tos. Um, and I can't even always keep up with them. Sometimes I don't even have time to watch a video before they post a new one. So if you're choosing to spend your time here, I'm so grateful. Um, today I am just going to be sharing the usual stuff, some whips, one finish, um, a little bit of haul, some life updates. Uh, I have a giveaway for the end um, to celebrate my 10th video and also a tip on some free patterns and how I make my floss tags. Um, it sounds like a lot, but I, I think this won't be, this won't be too bad. So anyway, I'm Chelsea and this is Sound Mind Stitching. Um, I live in Georgia and I have four kids and a husband who is a pastor. Um, it's very hot here. It's very hot. So, um, it's summer. My kids are all out of school. Um, we, let's see, last weekend we went up toward Atlanta. We live closer to the coast. Um, we went up to Atlanta direction to visit my aunt and uncle. The rest of my family was there. My parents, my other sister, I have two sisters. One is, one has kids and is married and one is engaged. So her fiance was there. Um, my cousins were there. It was, it was fun. Um, one of our kids did not sleep great. So it was pretty exhausting, but um, we moved away from my family over two years ago. And with COVID limiting trips anyway, any chance I get to be with my family is is a blessing so that was fun um more recently yesterday and the day before my husband and I worked together to stain our pergola that we built last September um, I'll put in a picture this is what it looked like when we built it so we used some plans a friend sketched and with the help of another friend put this together last September um it was a beast <laughs> um and it's just been there like that, the raw wood. But yesterday we finished staining it. So this is what it looks like now. Um, I love it. I'm so happy with the color. I think it looks really good with our house. Um, now my husband can put plants on it. Um, I have curtains that I had hung up, so I'll hang those back up soon. Um, and we don't, it's not, you know, we don't have a screened in porch, but it's a pretty nice place to be in the evening, especially this time of year. So, um, the final kind of thing I've been doing, which is actually stitching related, is um, as I said, my husband's a pastor and our church has an after school program during the school year. And in the summer, it's a full day camp for kids whose parents work. Um, some kids are there from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And I don't know if they did this last summer, but this summer, once a week, they're having people volunteer to come in and teach kind of an hour of, they're calling them specials. So, you know, like in school, you go to art or music. Um, so different people volunteer and someone's teaching baking, someone's doing fishing. Um, I thought about it and thought, what if I could teach some kids to cross stitch? Um, and the director thought that was a great idea. So Thursday was our first class. Um, I had about 10 kids, almost all girls, but a couple boys. Although my favorite part was one of the boys, um, I guess the day before they had asked the kids to kind of choose which special they were interested in and he hadn't been there. So he had somehow got put into cross stitch without his will. And he found out that other kids had picked kickball <laughs> and about halfway through he was like, this is not what I signed up for. I did not pick this. I do not want to be here. And he wasn't ugly about it at all, but he was just like really bemoaning cross stitch. He was having a hard time. So I think he's going to go to kickball next week, but most of the rest of the kids in seem to enjoy it. Um, especially the older girls who the oldest kids there are like going into sixth grade. So they're like 
10, 11. Um, we had a couple nine-year-olds and some of them picked it up really fast. We didn't do any actual cross-stitching. Um, all I did is I got plastic, like a plastic canvas with little squares. I got really big needles and just some cheap thread off Amazon. All we worked on this week was like threading your needle, going in and out of the holes. So I thought if we had time, we might work on doing an actual cross stitch last week, but we just didn't have time. So this week I plan to teach them how to do a cross stitch, you know, up one side back and give them kind of a little pattern just of like blocks that they can stitch on that plastic canvas and they can choose their own colors, but just kind of follow the pattern. So um, it was really fun. It was slightly chaotic, but I loved it. And I hope um, if even just one kid discovers a love of cross stitch that they, you know, carry with them into the future, that will feel, feel really fun. So that, um, that's going on all summer, once a week, um, for the next like six weeks now. Um, second is my haul. So I actually got a lot more haul than what I'm going to show you, but some of it, um, is is to help kit up some projects and I think at the end of June I'm gonna have a, my video will be a kit parade because I have so many I have like 30 kits things kitted up um I kitted up some of those new patterns that a viewer sent me um the fox and Christmas delivery by cottage garden samplings and I'm still waiting I haven't ordered the over dyed yet so once I get all that together I'm going to show you all the different things I have kitted up um but one thing I forgot to show last time that I already had is this um, DMC color card. So I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was $10. Um, it is put out by DMC. It lists, it's very big, but it lists all of the colors. Not It, it stops at a certain point. Like it doesn't have any of the four four thousands. Oh wait, actually it does. Never mind. I'm thinking of something else. It does have some four thousands. It has all of the some of the DMC specialty threads. Um, it just shows you kind of the ones in each family. So let me just show you these two. So these are all the different ways that they group them. And I'm gonna link to this video by Sarah Humphrey Embroidery where she talks about color theory. Um, it's been so helpful as I've been changing out colors and looking for substitutions um, using this. So like, you know, let's say, let's see, like let's say um, a pattern is calling for 602. Um, your best bet is gonna be to choose something in this same family. like. If you go across this way, the designer chose 602 because it went with the other colors they picked. And so um, that doesn't mean that they only chose things from this column, but if you're trying to substitute just one color, you kind of want to stay within that same family. Um, so you'd be better off choosing like 603 probably than jumping over to one of these. Um, and I found that to be so helpful. Um, and anyway, I just, it also has helped um, to compare um, colors I have. I don't have all the DMC yet. I'm working on slowly collecting them. Um, it's just really helped me to, to see what, what could be a good substitute. So that, again, I got at Hobby Lobby. I think you can buy one that has like actual thread in it and maybe one day, but for now that, that's, been, that's been helpful. Um, Another thing I just got is the newest Nutcracker Village chart. Um, it's Merliton's Music Store. So I believe this is number seven. Um, I'm still, no wait, this is number six. Well, it's number seven, it's the sixth house. The first one was the middle part of Nutcracker Village. Um, I'm gonna show you the one that I finished this in a few minutes, but this is number six of the houses. So the seventh release, um, the newest, the eighth release just came out. I just saw the preview of it. Um, but I still have three more to get to before I, ooh, whoops, three more to get through before I even get to this one. Um, but it's super cute. Um, another thing I got, this is honestly, I think the first paper pattern other than Nutcracker Village that I've ever ordered. This is um, Cranberry Row by 
Rosewood Manor. It's a stocking. Um, Y'all are gonna get to follow along my journey with this. So I really want to eventually make stockings for everyone in our family, the six of us. Um, I don't like the like dated ones. <laughs> I know there's like some like, um, I can't even think of the name. There's some that are like, I think they're cute, but my thought is like, will my adult child want to take this stocking with them when they leave my house and use, you know what I mean? Um, like if they get married or something. I would want it to be something kind of classic and not childish or dated. So I felt like this was beautiful, but until I got it, um, I saw on the listing that it had beads, but I didn't realize how many beads. So it's hard to see, but all the places where there's red are beads. And I have never done beading. I'm not really sure how I feel about beads. Um, so. I'm not in any hurry. I actually ordered fabric for this and then when it came, it's too dark. So I'm gonna use it. I have something else to use it for, but I need to get some different fabric anyway. Um, I wasn't gonna have this done by this Christmas, so it's no hurry. Um, I'd been waiting on it to go back in stock at one, two, three stitch and it finally did. So I, I ordered it. Um, I'm trying to decide if I could do French knots instead of beads, but then I didn't know how stable that would be to you know, when you're packing up a stocking at Christmas, I'm not sure how that would work. So maybe I should just do the beads. I don't know. I have a little Mill Hill kit that I got from a viewer and it has beads. So I might just try that and see what I think about beads and then make a decision. So anyway, um, I'm thinking if I make one for everyone in our family, I would just change the colors. So like my one son loves orange. And so somehow make it kind of an orange colorway. And my one daughter loves pink, so I might do like a pink and purple. Um, I, I kind of want them all to go together, but they don't have to match. Um, I'm not like a big, huge, like type A about Christmas decor, but I just think these are really classic and I love the trees. Okay, speaking of Nutcracker Village, um, I did finish the, well, it's the, fifth release Snow Queen's Ice Cream Shop, but it's only my second house. So last month I finished Russian Peppermint Shop and this month I finished Snow Queen's Ice Cream Shop. Um, this is done on 32 count Belfast linen. It's raw silver. You can see there's kind of little silver threads. That's what all the sparkly things are. Um, this is by Country Cottage Needleworks. It calls for a few DMC and mostly over dyed. I'm not using all the over dyed um, and I'm not using over dyed in all the places it's called for, but I'm basically using over dyed for the sections that have really big blocks. So you can tell on this one, I, I used it for the door is purple and the house is blue um, and the roof, the darker brown is, um, is also over dyed. It's, I can't find my, um, oh, you know what? I can look at this other pattern. Um, classic color works. So, um, this one, the blue is rain shower. The purple is sugar plum. The darker brown is wagon wheel and the lighter brown is hazelnut. Um, there's some other colors that are used for some of the other patterns, but, um, this was fun. I did this one much more quickly than the one next to it, partly because I didn't have to count as much because I was able to just continue it. And um, I'm hoping this month also to finish the one that goes on the other side, which is the Chinese tea room. Um, you'll notice the eyes of the people, her eyes are like the right size, but way too close together. His eyes are a, maybe too big and too far apart. <laughs> I don't know. So I think I might just not do any of the eyes until the very end. Um, I can't, I think the the guy I did was two strands and the girl was one, but I couldn't remember how many I had done. Anyway, they don't look, they don't look great. So I'll fix that later. Um, but I basically am trying to finish two of these a month on here in order to finish it by Christmas. So we'll see if I can do it. I don't know. But that was my only finish for the last few weeks. Um, I've, I calmed down from mania where I was like, you know, changing it up and I've been pretty monogamous. Um, trying to kind of meet some goals. So um, my goal was to work on that Snow Queen until I finished it. But then we went on our trip and 
because it's linen and I really love to use my magnifiers and I knew my wonderful sisters who I love dearly would never let me live it down if I put those magnifiers on at a family gathering. <laughs> I decided to take something else that was a little bit simpler. So I took um, this, it's Washington DC by Awesome Pattern Studios on Etsy. Um, I got some more, some more done on this. Um, this is just a really easy pattern. It's on 16 count Ada that I got at Hobby Lobby. It just uses DMC. Um, it's a, it's a pretty soothing thing to work on because it's got a lot of color changes, but they're kind of blocks of color. Um, so I'm just kind of working from the middle and working my way out. It, it kind of finishes in a round. I'm going to hopefully try to finish it as a circle. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I started that one because my husband and I went to DC in April together for kind of a anniversary marriage trip. Um, and I started that to kind of commemorate that. Um, my final, my other whip is I, I really, I worked on the Snow Queen even in the car on the way to Atlanta. Then once we got there, I switched to Washington DC. On the way home, I pulled Nutcracker back out. And then when I finished it, um, that part, I started working on the one for my husband. So this is um, In the Garden by Stitchrobia. And you can see, you guys, I'm so close to being done. Um, this is stitched on 14 count Ada. The color is dirty um, and I've, I've been done with the top half for a good while. Um, let's see if I can kind of roll it, roll it down. So this month I have worked on the seed packet, the glove, I think, I think I did the wrench last month. This whole, really this whole little section, I had done the rake. I'm almost done with the tomatoes. I would have finished it this morning, but I slept in too late and I didn't have time. And then I, I did finish this shed. So all that's left, is um well i gotta finish the tomatoes there's a cucumber a boot and then like a garlic thing this is the top of it um only three more motifs so i'm hoping to finish the tomatoes today after this video and then also work on start working on one of the other ones and probably in a couple days i'll be done fully with that one um so yeah that was my other whip so really just those three um but it's been kind of nice just kind of just work on one thing at a time. Um, I'm looking at my, okay, I was trying to figure out my order of what I was going to talk about. So I wanted to talk about my floss tags. So I'm going to pull out a set of them. Um, actually, no, not that set. That is, um, let's look at this. This is one of the ones I've been kidding at. Um, this isn't very impressive looking, but I, with the help of my friend who kind of inspired me, have been making my own floss tags. So this is what they look like when they're done. Sorry, the dog is barking to come in and I got interrupted by a child. Anyway, this is what they look like, the ones that I make. So here's how I do it. Um, I have kind of a little set of supplies that I use. Um, I order this set of um, gift tags from Amazon. So it comes with like 200 of these for like six or seven bucks. And this is what they look like when they come. They don't have the big hole. So then I ordered this craft punch. And this one is my second one. The first one got stopped working. Um, I can't remember how big this is. But um, this one's a little smaller than the first one I had, but it works fine. So I just take the um, gift tag, center it, and then it punches a little hole. And then you can also order these um, binder rings, I think is what they're called, and they fit right through the hole. And I, um, for a while I was using a hole punch to make this hole bigger, but I've stopped doing that because it just hasn't felt necessary. And then I put the floss on. So um, I usually write the number of the DMC or I haven't actually put this on yet, but this out, if I'm gonna you put over dyed on one of these, I write it. Um, sometimes I haven't started this one yet, so I haven't done it, but 
I will write the symbol as well as the number, um, which just makes it a little bit easier to find um, on the ring. And then to actually get the floss on it, I actually have one skein. I bobbinated everything else, so I don't have anything. Um, here's a skein of DMC. So hopefully um, you already know the trick about um, pulling off the number part. That's where you should pull from. So this is what I do when I'm gonna make a floss tag. Um, I pull off that end and I use this like inch ruler and I use this to wrap it. It really kind of depends on how long you want your strings to be. If you're using the loop, loop method, then this will mean your thread is only like 12 inches long because um, this makes it 24, but if, if you fold it over, you know, it'll only be 12. Um, if you use like an 18 inch quilting ruler, then that would even help more. So anyway, I, I wrap it around. We've got a, a visitor. Um, so then I pull it off, hold the end that's all loops because one end is gonna have your ends at it. Okay, so you've got it like this. You have to say my name. This is Zoe. <laughs> this is my daughter Zoe. She's visiting us. Um, you're gonna cut the other end. So now you have your strings. Then you'll take your, your floss tag and you're gonna put it through the hole on the side that has your number. This makes it easiest to pull off. Um, and loop this through. And there you have it. And then um, hopefully you know you can use your needle, these are scissors, but you can use your needle to just separate one strand and it just pulls right out. Um, this is how I make, it to everybody. Mm -hmm. this is how I make my floss tags. And I love the really cute ones. Um, but this has been a really inexpensive way to make them and I'm, um, I'm good with it for now. So I hope that helps if you don't have the budget to buy really fancy ones, but you really wanna try them. Um, again, $7 for the gift tags, a couple bucks for the rings, maybe six or $7 for the punch. So what's the punch? It's this thing. Don't, hey, don't, if you do that, the whole thing's gonna fall over. Um, this obviously you can keep using then you just would have to pay seven dollars for 200 gift tags if you need to make more and i mean most of the projects i do you know use 15 or 20 so that's enough for 10 10 um 10 projects so anyway hope that helps do you want to say, say anything yes what bye bye well bye bye for now i'm gonna talk about some more things but first I'm My gonna name go is Zoe. <laughs> you want to show them your teeth we just lost another tooth so that she's lost oh the middle two and then she just lost this one last night we pulled it out so mm, enjoy that view <laughs> <laughs> I was telling them about the cross stitch class that we did up at church what did you think about it mm -hmm. kind of boring but I love but I like the shows and movies that you have on your phone. Yeah, yeah Zoe was going to learn how to do it, but um, it was kind of hard and I couldn't really sit and help her. So I also had our two-year-old there and after a while I sent them into the next room to watch a show on my phone so I could finish. But this week we're going to think of a better plan. What do you think? No. I, I don't know. We're going to find some, a different way to handle it. So Every day we, we learn people how to do cross stitch. Uh-huh. <gasps> Don't pull on that, please. I don't know yet. All right, I'm gonna go look at Zoe's magnet house <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back and do the giveaway, talk about some more goals and give you an idea for some free patterns. Okay, um, one of the things I love about floss tube is it's okay if my five-year-old comes in the video. It's all good. <laughs> um, so next I wanna share a couple, an idea for free patterns. I've seen different floss tubers sharing free patterns that they found um and i've been i found a good bit so i thought i would just slowly tell you about them over the course of the next few videos um one designer that i'd never even heard of until i watched um, felicia at mouse potato designs is jardin privé um it's a french designer or maybe there's more than one 
they have some really beautiful patterns you can purchase, but they also have a really big number of free web free patterns on their website. So there's actually four that are all trees for the season. So I'm going to show you the pattern because it's free on their website. So um, I think it's okay. So this is, it's in French, but it's basically tree of summer. Um, pretty simple, only like eight colors really small it's like 50 by 50. Um, so I'm gonna slowly stitch these over the next few months. Um, I'm actually I'm almost done with well I'm probably halfway. This is the summer one. Um, I'm changing up some of the colors because my fabric is a little bit lighter. Um, I still just need to do like the apples and the leaves and I'll be done. Um, but I'm thinking about um, doing this kind of a la Stitching with the Housewives where, or Fat Quarter Shop where they show, you know, you put magnets on the back and change it out. I'd like to just put it in my room um, by my desk and just change it out each season. So they have one for each season. Again, this is the summer one. Um, it's just a very like delicate pattern. And this is, I think this is just 14 count Ada that I had. Um, I'm just stitching it in a little hoop. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun little stitch. I do a lot of big things, so it's kind of nice to do a small thing. <laughs> um, so go check out that website. I'll link it below. Um, there's lots of other ones if you're interested in um, some of the other free ones that are there. Now, um, I am going to do a giveaway to celebrate 10 episodes and almost 400 viewers. I um, There's been a few people who apparently uh, have gone back and forth about <laughs> subscribing. So I had 398 for several days and then it was 399 and I was like, sweet. Um, I'm almost like, I wonder if I'll hit 400 before today when I filmed, which I don't really care that much about the number, but at 400, it's a nice round number. Um, and then I looked this morning and it was like 397. So two people <laughs> subscribed, but then someone else subscribed. So now I'm back as of this recording to 398 so we're just going to call it 400 for the sake of celebrating and i have three things to give away today um all of these are from jennifer who was a viewer who sent me a big package of designs that she didn't want um or need anymore and i am keeping some of them to eventually pass back out into the stitching world but um there's a few that i just know i'm not going to stitch so i'm going to give them away so the first one um, oh, I forgot the whole YouTube giveaway thing. So you have to be 18 or older to give me your address and you have to be in the United States. Um, I'd love it if you'd subscribe, um, and like the video or, um, just to, to stay in touch. If, if you like the content, then I hope you hang around. Um, so there'll be three patterns and I'll give you a kind of a keyword for each one to put in the design um, or I'm sorry in the comment <laughs> so this one is um, Christmas turtle by Stony Creek um, this is a meant to be kind of an ornament and it calls for it has anchor and DMC um, it also has some calls for some other things like creeks colored colors which maybe is like their brand of overdyed and a rainbow gloss and you could order some Christmas lights to put in there. Um, it's 35 by 35, so pretty small. Um, I guess the lights are buttons. Anyway, um, you could, you know, work with it to make it your own. You could check out their website, which is stonycreek.com, stony with an E, um, and probably order maybe the other stuff that you would need. So if you are interested in winning this, please, in your comment, use the word turtle. Um, and in your comments, I'd love to know, um, what's your favorite thing that you're working on? Give us a link to, or give us the name of the pattern or the designer. Um, I love finding, finding new cool stuff. Going along the Christmas theme, this is a um, Mill Hill kit. Um, it is an ornament. It is called gingerbread stocking and there's other gingerbread ones. There's like a boy, a girl, a little cabin or a house and some trees. Um, 
It comes with perforated paper, floss, needles, the chart, and the beads. Um, and I mean, you know, this would be an ornament, I guess. So if you are interested in winning this one, please use the word gingerbread in your comment. Um, it looks, wow, it looks like it only has like one color floss. Like essentially I think you just stitch the stocking, the brown, and then the rest is all beads. So that's pretty intense. Um, if you like beads, this would probably be a great kit. Um, so yeah, gingerbread. Finally, um, this is a pattern by Lizzie Kate. It says, be kind always, enjoy every moment. Um, this is just a little 95, oh, okay. I just, I'm just now looking at the back. This is a small, um, and it does come with a little button with it to use on one of the flowers. Um, it calls for Weeks Dye Works or there's DMC conversions and a classic color works as well. Um, on the back, you can see there's a bunch of other words, and I guess you could stitch them all together if you wanted. So this one is just one of those sections. Um, I actually was given more than one of these. So I actually have three, and I maybe should have given them all away at the same time, but it's too late. So come back, and I'll maybe give, I'll give away the other ones. <laughs> so um, this is Be Kind Always, Enjoy Every Moment, which on the pattern there on the back is the top one. Um, I also got, I think the third one there, it says, you've got you choose bravely. No, you've got this, be you bravely. And then I uh, maybe the other one today, choose joy, keep it simple. Um, so if you want this one, then use the word kind in your comments. So yeah, tell me what's your favorite thing you're working on right now. And use one of those words, either turtle, gingerbread, or kind. And um, I'll choose the winner before my next video, which will be in two weeks. Um, my favorite thing that I'm working on is probably Nutcracker Village. It, it was a bear at first, but now that I've got those magnifiers, <laughs> um, it's it's been fun to do the houses with the overdyed, um, and I'm excited to keep moving around the square and finish that for my daughter for Christmas. Um, like probably a lot of people, my favorite thing is honestly whatever I'm currently working on. But I do have a couple of projects that I don't especially love, but I plan to give them as gifts, so I need to finish them. So going forward, I plan to only choose things I'm super excited about, but I need to finish what I have first. So um, anyway, that is kind of everything for today. Um, my plans between now and the end of June and my next video are to finish the garden one for my husband. Um, I'd like to finish the other Nutcracker one. I It took me five or six days to do the first one, or the, the Snow Queen. And I think the garden will take me another maybe two or three days. I wish it wouldn't take me so long, but summer with kids home and work, and it's I just don't have a lot of time. So I'd love to finish the garden and the Chinese tea room. I'd also like to work on this Parks and Rec sampler that I've shared before that I'm giving to my sister who's getting married in September. Um, so I might be able to do more than all that, but that's what I'm hoping to do before the end of June. Um, also, I, I plan to film in two weeks on the 24th um, and just do just a regular floss tube. And then the end of June. So instead of waiting two weeks, just doing one week and doing a kit parade. By then I should hopefully have the overdyed I'm waiting on and I'll have all my kits. I'll have all of the information. I'll put all of it in the description and you can see kind of what I've been working on. Um, I, I love it when other people post that kind of stuff because you can see fabric options. I'm going to try to do what, um, Angie from the Tiny House Stitcher and show you what the DMC match is for the fabrics um, because I find that so helpful when I'm choosing fabric. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my plan. Um, that's all I've got for today. I hope that you are having a good summer. If you're in the South like me, I hope you're finding a way to stay cool because it's brutal. Um, I'm really thankful to get to share my stitching with you and I hope to see you again next time.